Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back. And today I'm taking a look at this right here. I'm just back from the shop. And because you've clicked on this video already, you know what this is. And I have to say, I am totally hyped. But one thing I have to point out first is that right there. Seriously, bags should come with something like this more often. This is really cool. And of course, this is the high resolution model Wing Gundam Zero EW from Endless Waltz. So this right here is only the second ever high resolution model. The last one was Barbatos, and that was probably one of the most controversial Gunpla releases by Bandai. As for the reasons why, I'll get to them as I'm going through this review. I have to say I loved the high resolution Barbatos. I thought it was an awesome kit, but it is definitely very different than your standard Gunpla. From the front of the box, you can see that this version of the Wing Gundam Zero EW has been given quite the overhaul. To me, I feel these are the Shizuoka Hobby Factory's answer to Tamashi Nation's metal build kits. They're kind of overhauled a little bit and stylistically different to what you see in the anime. As for the box, that is the front. Nothing really on the sides, just a continuation of the front image. Around here on the back, we can see that inner frame, some of the details of the inner frame, some of the finish of the outer armor. This says gloss injected and matte finish, so we've got a lot of contrasting outer parts. And right here it says armor expansion showcases the zero system activation state. Multi-layered structure adds beauty to action poses. So it seems like the armor can move around a bit maybe? The six wings largely modified from the animated series expand dynamically. The impressive figure enhanced by the contrast of light and shadow gracefully flies in the air. Movable axes enable the wings to be flexibly deployed. And that right there is what the wings look like as well as the rest of the mobile suit. Now all I can say so far is this thing looks absolutely sick. This kit actually has that transformation to Neo Bird mode and that looks epically cool. And here the combination of various materials widens the scope of mechanical rendition. Lead wires are used for the cable connecting the mobile suit and the buster rifle. So, so far looking pretty cool. Let's bust this thing out and see, wait a minute. You're probably curious as to the price and this comes in at about 12,000 yen so it is a bit on the pricey side. But anywho, let's bust this thing open and see what we've got. So that right there is the inside of the box and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bags of runners. These advertisements which we've seen thousands of times already, well that's a bit of an overstatement. There is the manual and this box right here which contains the inner frame. But let's start off with the manual. So there is the manual and down here we have a whole bunch of information on the Wing Gundam Zero EW, the Zero System, as well as Operation Meteor. I'll throw all those up on the screen right now so you can read those at your own leisure and then in here we've got all the included parts which is 18 runners as well as the beam effects and considering this has a pre-made inner frame that's quite a few runners there is the assembly first is the frame well that comes pre-assembled so that's not an assembly then chest armor head armor arm armors leg armors waist wings and there seems to be a whole lot to the wings the wings seem to take up most of it. And then we've got the buster rifles, the shield, assembling the two buster rifles into the twin buster, and then the transformation. So because this is a high resolution model, that means no decal guide or paint guide because you don't need either. And around here in the back, we've got some more information on the Neo Bird mode, the frame, twin buster rifle, as well as the connector cable. Oh, wait a minute, down there as well, we've got info on the wings. So I'll throw all that up again, once again, so you can check that out. So as for the runners, the first we've got in here is runner A. A1. Here we've got the gold parts of the shoulder, the V-fin, as well as these parts I think go on the shield. And this is just kind of like a silver chrome runner sprayed gold. I'd say inside is probably either clear or white, but this is just a paint. And that is one of the aspects about these sort of kits. Well, at least the last one that people kind of complained about a little bit. And that's that these are just sprayed. That's literally something you could do yourself. And of course, when you cut off pieces, those are going to leave some marks. Next is runner A2. And of course, this is new for this year as is all the parts on this. I think we'll see about the beam sabers, I guess. This is in brown as well as this fantastically vivid clear green. So far, looking really good. None of this is painted. This is just the color of the plastic. Next up then, we've got runner A3. This has the buster cannons on there as well as what looks like some parts for the inner frame and this is in a gray. We also have runner A4, which is just that segment right there once again. Runner A5, and if you feel like you recognize this one, then you do because it's pretty much a lot of runner A2. Next up then is runner B1 and this is in a high gloss red. Now this is just the plastic, this isn't painted, and man, so far, 
The varying textures on this look like they're going to be pretty cool. We also have B2 right here, which is pretty much the same as that section. Actually, it's exactly the same as that section of B1. Next up then is B3. This is in a light grey, or should I say off-white? Because these are going to be parts for on the wings, but this is a very light grey. So, of course, this is going to add some contrast onto the wings, kind of like the real grade style of white colour separation. Runner C1 in an extremely vivid blue. Again, high gloss like the red ones you saw already. And one thing I have to say about this, it seems like they really didn't skimp on the pigment in these plastics. This is runner C2 and the gloss looks great. Next then runner D, again this is another glossy runner and this is a pure brilliant white of the wings as well as some of the armour. This is the only runner in this entire kit that there's two of, everything else is completely unique. Next up runner E1, again more brilliant white right here, some parts of the head and as you can see the detail so far looks just as good as the colour. So far definitely really, really hyped about this kit. Runner E2 is just one part, and I'm gonna guess that's from the shield. Runner F1, another light grey runner. F2 then is exactly the same as that upper section there. Runner G1 in a darker grey, definitely a lot of parts for adding onto the inner frame there, as well as some of the shield. And as well as G1, we have a G2, which is the same as this little section down here. The last runner in here then is the beam sabers, and as you can see up here, these are from 2000. So a pox on you Bandai for that, seriously. All of this kit was brand new until it came to this. Honestly, it may be a little bit picky, but I would like to see some nice, fancy, harder, less cheap looking beam sabers in here for this. These are exactly what we would have seen on the old master grade, so I don't know, big seam line, just as they usually do. A small complaint, I guess. But still. The last thing in here then is this little loop of red wire. Kind of looks like a finger noose. And finally in here then is this little loop of red wire, which kind of looks like a finger noose. But of course what we really want to see is this right here. So probably most people's biggest complaint about this kit is this right here. This is the inner frame which is essentially a figure, which is kind of strange for Gunpla. But most people's complaint is this is made in China, not Japan, like most Gundams. These are quite expensive kits, so some people do expect a little more from Bandai, at least the hobby section of Bandai. But anyway, let's get this out of there and take a look at what exactly we have in here. Of course, tape. Okay, so opening that up. And in here we have these little wing sections, one and two, as well as the inner frame itself. I'm gonna set these wing sections aside until the actual review. For now, let's check out the inner frame. On first inspection from afar, it looks pretty damn nice. The color separation on there is really cool, and we've got some nice die cast parts on there. The die cast parts seem to be on the knees, wrists, chest, on the sides of the waist there, dotted all around. The clear section on the chest looks really nice. It seems to extend back a little bit towards in here, but I will say it does look a little bit on the dark side and doesn't really seem to catch the light so much, not yet anyway. And the eyes there have already been applied. To me that does look like a sticker, not paint, so that is pretty interesting. All in all this thing does feel pretty solid. To be honest I don't exactly remember how the Barbatos one felt, it's been so long now. But anyway I have to say so far it feels good. But anyway let's check out the articulation. So there is the head all the way up, all the way down, that can rotate all the way around. We've got another joint down a little bit further, so it can chicken neck like that. As for the shoulder the arms can swing out like that. Only rotation here here at that point. The shoulders can rotate separately to the arms. There's the arm all the way up. Rotation there. Bend at the elbow. As you can see the frame does have screws in it there. More rotation here. Up and down there. Rotation at the wrist. And the hand is pretty much the same as the master grades. The thumb is separate like that and the fingers swap out like so. As for the ab crunch, there it is all the way to the front, all the way to the back, I think that's it, so mainly to the front. Side to side, rotation, butt flaps move up, spinny bit down here, spinny bits here for the front skirting armor, leg all the way up to the front, all the way out to the back, splits, well, beyond splits, thigh rotation, gets a little bit blocked with that part, the bend at the knee is a little bit complex because there is a transformation gimmick in here, so there's quite a few moving bits here, here, as well as here. And then the ankles side to side. That's as far back as it can go. That's as far 
up as it can go, so quite a bit towards the front. You also then have a bend here at the toes. Okay, so this inner frame definitely feels great. The articulation is great. I don't know how much of that it will maintain once the armor is on, but so far the inner frame definitely better than the last time. This feels secure, it feels high quality, and it seems to me like Bandai may have taken all the criticism on board and it made more solid product, so that's cool. Oh wait, we also have some movement back here at the backpack. Anyway, so that is it for the unboxing. So, so far looking really good. I like the inner frame this time. It's pretty cool. I did like the last one too. This one seems a little bit better engineered, but I guess only time will tell. Besides that, everything right here is brand new except for this here. And for those of you wondering where is the review of this monster right here, don't worry, that is coming too. See you next time.